On today's ChurchTechCast.com Q&A show, Pro 6 Basics, a risky upgrade, long YouTube streams, and my Amazon link. Hi, and welcome again to another episode of the ChurchTechCast.com Q&A show. This is the show where every week I answer your church tech questions. And that reminds me, I'd love for you to ask here, so just leave them below the video, whether you're on TrinityDigitalMedia.com or YouTube, or if you're listening to the audio, no problem, uh, hit me up on Twitter, Paul Allen Cliff, P-A-U-L-A-L-A-N-C-L-I-F, or drop me a line, Paul at TrinityDigitalMedia.com. And that reminds me, I am your host, Paul Allen Clifford. So let's dive into the questions that people asked at those various venues, including one that's a little unusual for me for this show. Uh, so first off, uh, Netzerog, I guess I'm saying that right. It's a YouTube name. Uh, on YouTube asks, I just downloaded ProPresenter 6 on my MacBook Pro. Good job. Can you direct me to very elementary first start videos on how to use? The only ones I see start uh, way too advanced for someone like me who has never used this before. I need simple help. Thanks. Well, at the time that you sent me this, uh, the best resource was uh, Brad's videos that he did for Renewed Vision. So I sent you that link. I've since started revisiting some of the more basic fundamentals with a ProPresenter 6 uh, view towards it on the Tuesday show, the churchtechcast.com screencast show. So tune into that as well, and I think between those two, you'll get a full understanding of how to use ProPresenter. Darren Entwistle on Twitter says, uh, Paul, so ProPresenter 6 is now available. Is it ready for upgrading on producing machines? Well, there are still some bugs, as you'd expect. You know, it's new software. I think here's what I would do. If you have ProPresenter 5, go ahead and download ProPresenter 6 because they can live side by side. And I would create all my presentations in ProPresenter 5, export them, and import them in ProPresenter 6. So that way, if you have a showstopper bug right before service, no harm, no foul, you just open up ProPresenter 5 and you're done. If everything works fine, you're golden. There are, and uh, keep updated, especially at the beginning, because they're fixing bugs pretty quickly. And so you might have one on a Wednesday that by the weekend is taken care of. So just keep that in mind. Make sure you run through everything before uh, service starts in order. So that you notice if anything goes awry, have someone look over your shoulder or look at the screen to see if anything goes crazy. And I think you'll be uh, really happy. ProPresenter 6 is pretty stable, but as I say, you know, it does have some bugs. I'm going to say that this guy's name is Jeff because it's G-E-F. Uh, on ChurchMag, in response to an article I wrote there about live streaming on YouTube. Hello, thanks for your very helpful blog. You're welcome. Is there any way to stream uh, two to four hours, two to four hour weekly services on YouTube or via Hangout without the Hangout logo and embedded to the church website? I appreciate your response. Well, Jeff, um, the answer is you can live stream up to four hours at a time on YouTube. I don't recommend it for other reasons. Uh, there's copyright things where even if you're totally in compliance, they can pull your stream midstream. And don't say it's never happened to me because, yeah, you, you never get pulled over for speeding until you get pulled over for speeding. And whether you were speeding or not, it's still a pain to get pulled over for it. So it's uh, there are churches that have had this problem, so I'm a little concerned about it. 
With that said, up to four hours is fine. The concern that I have is what if your four hour service goes to 401 or 405? Then you have problems and that's a hard limit as far as I know. I don't think there's any way to get around it. So um, basically you'd have to kind of have a backup stream ready to go and if it looks like you're getting near that time, maybe during a prayer or a transition between elements or something like that, you'd stop it and start it again. So that's what I'd recommend uh, to you as a way to get back, uh, uh, get past that. Finally, Kimber Turner uh, via email says, Paul, I enjoyed your post comparing the podcast hosting services. Well, that was actually a pretty popular post. It was just kind of a one-off. But anyway, I am just starting mine and found your site as I was considering which to use. While on your site, I noticed you had a very interesting button on the side. I, too, have an Amazon affiliate relationship and absolutely love the idea of the button that folks could drag to their favorites bar. Is that something that is available on the affiliate site, or did you make that yourself? I would love to be able to add that to my sites. Please feel to call me or email me with information about it. Thank you. Well, Kimber, what happened is I saw someone else do that. Looked at uh, that person's source code. I can't remember who it was. I'd love to give you credit if it was you, but I can't remember who it was. So I noticed it was just basically a link, just an image link, and he said, oh yeah, you can drag this to the bar. I tried it, it worked pr perfectly fine. So it occurred to me, well, why can't I do that? So I did the exact same thing. I opened Photoshop, I created that uh, little picture that fits in my sidebar. I linked it directly to my affiliate code, not with any products in specific, but you know, the amazon.com slash affiliate code link that will take you directly to Amazon.com and I just put it there. So it's actually really simple to do. Um, maybe if you're not into graphic design, maybe uh, head over to Canva or get someone on Fiverr or 99designs to create something for you. And then it's just like making uh, a button on your website or a picture that you click and it goes to something else. It's uh, pretty simple to do. So I hope that was one of your questions. I hope you were thinking, man, how did Paul know that I had that question? But it probably wasn't, because there's a billion possible questions, and I'd love for you to ask them. So don't forget, right below the video or paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com. If you like this content, I bet you'd like my newsletter. So head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts and pick out your church tech gift and your free subscription to my email newsletter where I'll answer more questions and give you more um, tips and tricks and to let you know some behind the scenes stuff going on here at Trinity Digital Media. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com. Go out and change eternity.